Hello, this is Dr. Scott, and today we're going to talk about the top five vitamin deficiencies in America. Uh, we're in the middle of a series, and this is series number two. And on this video, we are going to talk about vitamin K. Vitamin K, uh, vitamin K2 in specific, uh, you may have heard about the importance of vitamin K1, known for its role in blood clotting. Um, but what is vitamin K2, and why is it so darn important? For starters, uh, it's estimated that nearly all Americans are deficient in K2. Vitamin K2, vitamin K2 is responsible for promoting brain function, uh, healthy skin, healthy bones. It helps to protect us from uh, major diseases like heart disease and cancer. A deficiency is linked to, uh, to autoimmune conditions, and I see a lot of these in my office. Um, heart attacks and stroke, and bone issues like osteoporosis and fractures. Vitamin K, uh, the type of vitamin K that I recommend uh, for supplementation is vitamin K2, which is natural and non-toxic, even at 500 times the RDA or recommended uh, daily allowance. Vitamin K2, which is made in your body and also produced by fermented foods. So the bacteria in a healthy GI tract can help make some K2. Um, fermented foods, which again, more bacteria uh, fermenting on the foods, also makes a lot of K2. Uh, and this is really a superior form of vitamin K. Increasing your K2 by consuming more fermented foods is the most desirable way to increase your levels. Vitamin K2 protects your heart. Um, vitamin K2 helps prevent hardening of the arteries, which is a common factor in coronary artery disease um, and heart failure. Research suggests vitamin K2 may help to keep calcium out of your arteries and the linings and other uh, body tissues where it can cause damage. The latest studies show vitamin K2, rather than K1, in concert with vitamin D, uh, prevents calcification of your coronary arteries, thereby preventing cardiovascular disease. Vitamin K2 helps prevent osteoporosis. Uh, that's the best way to achieve healthy bones is a diet rich in fresh, raw, whole foods that maximize natural minerals so your body has the raw materials it needs to do what it was designed to do. Vitamin K2 is one of those most important nutritional interventions for improving your bone density. It serves as the biological glue that helps plug calcium and other important minerals into your bone matrix. There are some uh, remarkable research studies about the protective effects of K2 against osteoporosis. A number of Japanese trials have shown that vitamin K2 completely reverses bone loss and in some cases even increases bone mass in people with osteoporosis. Uh, the pooled evidence of seven Japanese trials showed that vitamin K2 supplementation produced a 60% reduction in vertebral fractures and an 80% reduction in hip and non-vertebral fractures. So research in the Netherlands also showed that vitamin K2 is three times more effective than K1 at raising osteoclastin, which is a, uh, a maker, maker of bone. So uh, this controls the building of the bones. Your bone strength depends on more than just calcium. Your bones are actually composed of more than a dozen minerals. So if you just focus on calcium, you are likely weakening your bones and increasing your risk of osteoporosis. Uh, vitamin K helps in preventing cancer. A number of studies have shown that vitamin K1 and 2 are effective against cancer. Uh, a 2008 study, a German research group discovered vitamin K2 provides substantial protection against prostate cancer, one of the most common types of cancer among men in the United States. According to Dr. Vermeer, men that were taking the highest amounts of K2 had about 50% less prostate cancer. Uh, vitamin K has also been found beneficial in fighting against non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, colon cancer, uh, stomach, nasopharynx, and oral cancers. Uh, some additional health bets, benefits of vitamin K. Um, as written in the March 2004 Life Extension magazine, researchers have found many other beneficial effects of vitamin K, including uh, vitamin K2 deficiency may be contributing to a factor, may be a contributing factor in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, vitamin K supplementation may help in preventing 
uh, Alzheimer's and other de uh, cognitive degenerative disorders. Uh, vitamin K improves insulin sensitivity. People who get the most vitamin K2 in their foods are about 20% less likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Uh, and also topical uh, vitamin K has been shown to reduce bruising. And vitamin, can, vitamin K has also been shown to be a, a fairly potent antioxidant. Um, vitamin K is fat soluble vitamin. Uh, this is important because dietary fat is necessary for the absorption of this vitamin. So therefore in order for your body to absorb vitamin K effectively you need to eat some fat along with it. Foods that are high in K2 include raw dairy products such as uh, soft cheeses, raw butter, uh, kefir, uh, sauerkraut, and I realized that K2 content of pasteurized dairy and products from confined animal feeding operations, uh, which comprise mostly of most all commercial sources uh, that we get today, are not high in vitamin K2 and should be avoided. Only grass-fed animals, not grain-fed, will develop naturally high K2. Um, Grass-fed butter is a great source of vitamin K2. Um, precise K, K2 values for different foods are difficult to find, um, but I did find a few estimates for comparison. Um, NATO, which is a uh, fermented soy product, has 1,000 micrograms, which is pretty high. It's one of the highest foods that, that we know of. The next highest level I could find was uh, whole egg mayonnaise, which is 197 micrograms. Uh, miso, which is another uh, fermentation process is 10 to 30 micrograms. Uh, lamb or duck, uh, one cup could be six micrograms. Beef liver, one cup, uh, five micrograms. So a lot of organ meats are high in, in vitamin K2. Uh, dark turkey, five micrograms. Chicken livers, three micrograms. So again, a lot of these foods, a lot of us don't get in our diet very often and don't really even find uh, appetizing. So this is why the vast majority of Americans are deficient in K2. Um, we grass-fed nothing. Most people eat exclusively grain-fed and conventionally produced animal products, which can contain virtually no vitamin K2. To obtain K2 from your diet, you must consume full-fat, grass-fed animal products. Um, again, here's why. Cows eat grass, which contains vitamin K1, and they convert it to vitamin K2 in their unique gastrointestinal system. Humans don't have this ability, so we, we must get our K2 from eating grass-fed animals. And animal foods. Uh, the richest source of, of vitamin K2 are grass-fed uh, fatty animal products like butter and cheese and heavy cream, um, meats including organ meats, cultured yogurt, and fermented foods. Um, so vitamin K2 is contained in the fat, so the fattier the better. But of course we've all been told that fat's bad and that's a whole other topic for maybe another, another video. But this is why we're all deficient in vitamin K2. So how much K2 should you consume? Um, now remember, you, it's always best to take your K2 supplements with a fat, uh, with some fatty foods. It's fat soluble and won't be absorbed without it. Um, although the exact dosing is yet to be really determined from what I can understand, the estimates, uh, estimated recommendations range between 45 micrograms to 185 micrograms daily for adults. Um, so uh, you must use some caution on the higher doses if you take anticoagulants, um, if you have but if you're generally healthy and are not on any types of uh, anticoagulant type medications, I usually recommend about 90 micrograms daily. So that is it for vitamin K. On the next video, we will talk about iodine. So this is Dr. Scott talking about the top five vitamin deficiencies in America. See you on the next video.